Okay, I'm going to play Jericho. This is page 127. It has a couple skills we haven't gone over yet. This is going to be one option for the final. So if this sounds a little challenging or looks challenging, don't worry. It's only one option. So the song has two lines. It goes back to the beginning with a repeat. Then it goes to the second line. And after two measures, it skips to the last line. That's called a first and a second ending. So it's in a newer position. It's the only thing we're going to look at in this position. And the left hand, instead of starting in this five finger position on C or even up higher on G, it's going to go down. It's going to start on an A. And you know what? This E, I think, is going to be off camera. It is. I'm going to move this down a little bit. All right. And I think that's still enough for the right hand. Yes. All righty. Okay. I'm going to play it at a moderate tempo. Not, not real slow as it could be played and not super peppy. going over this now but a couple of the things in this song swing feel does not have to be played that way it could be played so swing feel or not by preference it has something called syncopation that's when an accent is kind of shifted forward there's a pink box at the top we're not going to worry about that now but the effect it creates here it's that third um, interval on the right hand. This one. This one. Those are the notes that are syncopated. It's really just a descriptive term. There's nothing scary about it. You just have to kind of learn how it sounds and how to do that. Um, a common example that most people have heard is... That top note. I'm kind of pounding on it a little bit and it comes early. That gives it like a little bit of emphasis and it creates energy. So that is going to be one choice for the final. One of the choices for the final is not in this book. I don't have the music here, but I think I can play the part we're going to be doing. Um, it's in the G position. And here it is. It's part of Minuet in G by Bach. And that's how much I will be going over. That's another option. And then the third option will be something that we go over back in the section before the final, but after where we are now. A lot of songs in this area we're not going to be doing. We will be working on page 113, Can Can, and 115, but we're not starting those yet because that has a, a whole new thing, and we're not doing that until we have these first two quizzes done. We will not do 110. So last class I played 109, which I said could be an option if you're interested. You know, I'm not actually sure if I played the whole song or just the intro, but that's definitely something that people can do, but is not required. So I went over fairly thoroughly page 108 and 107. And okay, hi, Simit. And I'm trying to see, it looks like there's just 
two of you and one of me. Not too many, but that's okay. Um, let me pop over here for a sec. So, when did you pop in, somebody? like in the past couple minutes, like the past minute or two? Because I was over at the piano. Did you just join us or did you hear a little bit? Um, I was here for like four minutes, I think. Okay, so mm -hmm. you'll get to watch this later. And in the very beginning, I played one of the choices for the final and then I just played another. So I'm going to go back here because I want to stay here when I'm doing the overhead because I don't really have a way to take the middle out of it. I know that can be done, but I don't know how. So there was one more thing that I did want to do. I did not do it. It's completely optional. But in case people started it, we looked at two lines of page 105, which is Cockles and Muscles. It's an old folk song. And the thing here that's new is in the left hand, most of the chords you shape your hand, pinky, three, thumb, like that C chord we're all familiar with, and you just move it. And if, um, if you're watching looking down on the video, I'm just shaping my hand and moving it. So that is a new thing in this song, and it starts opening up to the possibilities that there are more things in piano than just a little hand position where you don't move. Ultimately, you move all over the place. So I am going to play two lines. I'm not going to go over that, but then I'm going to go over the last two lines. One other thing that this song does is similar to Alouetta. Part of the melody is in the left hand. So if I just play the melody in the beginning, I'm using both hands, the thumb in the left hand. I don't know if this is reversed like a mirror. I kind of think it is, but I don't know how, I don't know a way to change that. Cause I, lots of times I watch piano videos and they're backwards like a mirror. So when I watch people, it looks like the melody right hand part is in their left hand. So I don't know if, if that's what's happening here, but, um, you play, this is my left hand, whatever it looks like to you. You play one note and then the other hand continues with the melody. That's how much we looked at. Then it starts like the beginning. different. And personally, I don't know why, but that ending is my favorite part. Something about that repetition almost starts to sound like cold play, maybe. I don't know, a nice little pattern there. So, the only thing in the end that's different from the beginning is that last line, which picks up at the very end of line three. And what you should notice is that that first measure is a C chord, but it's not blocked together. It's played one note at a time. We call that broken. It can be called arpeggiated. It happens two times. Then it ends. Now another um, key characteristic of this is the rhythm with a dotted quarter then an eighth which then leads into a quarter. So if we look at the first two measures, the beginning, not counting the pickup note, the first full measure is called the first measure. We have the dotted rhythm, then the next measure is steady. The dotted, the steady. Dotted, steady. 
So this is completely optional. Um, it looks to me like there's still, there's two of you here. I don't see anyone else has joined us. So if you like this, if things are going well, you might want to finish it. If you're really feeling kind of, your time's kind of crowded, my suggestion is you look at the first two lines. Don't worry about absolutely perfect. Just try to get those lines down where your left hand moves over. See if you can coordinate that. Once you can do that, focus on the other things. So, I guess with the two of you here, um, I'm going to ask you specifically. I don't. I'm going to come over here so I can see a little bit better. Do either of you have trouble with either, or have you started working on Got Those Blues, 107 and 108? Is there anything in those songs that I could break down and play that would be helpful? Because I'd be happy to do that, but I, I pretty much work through everything, but if there's something that's specifically challenging to you, I could try to do that even more. Okay, if you're both okay, can you just tell me you're okay so I don't just think maybe 